Are you ready? Yes, I am. Hello, everybody. A warm welcome to Wisdom from North, the place where we're diving into the deeper meaning of life and asking the big questions. My name is Yannicka, and today I'm so honored to be here with Shri Muji. Now, Muji was born in Jamaica and moved to London and worked as a street painter and later as a teacher in a college. But in 1987, he met a Christian mystic that really changed his life, this encounter. It brought him into a direct experience with the divine within. And within a short period of time, he experienced a shift in consciousness. Hello, Muji. Welcome. How are you? I'm fine, fine, fine. Thank you. Nice to see you. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm very excited about speaking to you today because um, I always share a little bit with my viewers about my own personal journey and I've been to India like seven years ago and uh, I feel like I've been on this spiritual quest for a long time and when I went to India my my goal was to awaken it was to experience this feeling of bliss and I thought I kind of knew what it was but now after doing for uh, 300 interviews for four years i feel like i still don't have a clue about what awakening is and i've never experienced it myself and from my perspective it seems like you have kind of um, reached a state that is very peaceful and in my eyes that's a kind of a, an awakening but would you agree can you speak a little bit about what an awakening is early in life to identify with the body as being ourself and also the conditioning which arose through whatever environment we grew up in, that quickly becomes our reference for life and seems to contribute to the identity we believe ourselves to be. And that is not uh, the truth in any complete sense, uh, but that is what we take to be ourself. And what we now often refer to as our personality or our person. So that is something that we acquire and uh, every human being at some point, early stages in their life, we, we fall into this state of uh, a kind of ignorance of our true nature. But that is somehow camouflaged or you may say... Um, uh, the conditioned state appears as though that's what our fundamental nature is. And so we go through life believing that, you know, I'm a man, I'm a woman, and uh, I, um, I, uh, my conditioning makes me who I am and so on. And that is pretty much so for most people until at some point, something in life, an experience, it could be um, something has a tremendous impact on us. Um, shakes us out of that sort of mold of or that mode of thinking and belief. It can be just simply meeting someone or even reading a book or uh, falling ill for some time or losing a best friend or the breakup of a relationship. These things, they can contribute to the kind of um, have an, an impact that may change the way we begin to look at life. And so right there for many people is born a deeper curiosity as to really what life is about because in such moments it feels so fickle that life can change just at the twist of uh, a moment and you can be fallen from a state of what seems to be happiness into deep states of sorrow and suffering. And so it really provokes a deeper uh, urge within us to search for something that is lasting and something more true. So that for many people is the beginning of their spiritual journey for a search for, com for the state of completeness. So you, I don't know if that really addresses your question really properly because you asked, you know, what is it like this awakened state? And I said, well, actually, um, as we come to discover more about our true nature, not just mentally or emotionally, um, but actually being experientially, and if we are so fortunate to meet someone who is a bit further ahead in that experience, who can guide us safely, or you meet a, a master or something, if we are so fortunate to meet a master, 
who can guide you and know the pitfalls that occur through the mind because the mind in its psychological aspect can be very misleading for many people and the master can guide you through uh, safely in a way in which you can begin to experience more profoundly more more sincerely uh, the truth of yourself as that begins to as that begins to happen you'll find a deep peace moving in a state of deep stillness and uh, a joy which does not need an event or a story to manifest and uh, and the more these uh, the, these are experienced they are so profound so impactful that they provoke they actually encourage you to go more deeply and it can become so much for some people that they are willing to to leave everything in their lives for it because it, it's such a profoundly beautiful state of being <laughs> wonderful i get a thousand questions uh, just right now um so w when you felt this awakening did you at the same time felt a connection to the divine and what then is that divine connection because i felt the connection to something greater but i don't think i felt the divine within and is that what you're saying that it's the true nature but it's also a, a kind of a relationship to something yes uh, for me it was very simple you know i mean it it um i simply started off feeling very very well at one particular encounter yeah, actually several encounters but uh, one provoked such a a a, a deep moment um, not of introspection of just but just inwardness and and relaxation and peace that uh, at the, uh, I did not want to sleep because I felt so so happy you see and then uh, so eventually of course I went to sleep but I wake up in the morning the feeling was still there you see and actually that a peace came that really never left um, but what I would, what I want to say is that um, it was very clear for me and perhaps because I grew up with a kind of Christian background so that would shape the way in which you may interpret what the experience the significance of the experience for me it was very clear this was nothing to do with something I had created it was simply a happening and it was so deep and so natural that I was it was like love at first sight although there wasn't a sight to it but uh, you know I, I, I was totally um, captivated by this just just I just wanted more to be so totally this I had no doubt about it inside in terms of it wasn't so much a belief it was more that the, the experience was so it was so profound and so uh, I felt so embraced by a loving power that I just wanted as much of it as possible and uh, this was what I was hinting at earlier when I said that uh, some things can happen in your life that can change it instantly and that was a kind of instant moment because it felt like I was ready to give everything up for this feeling and that was just after a few days so it can happen like that for some yeah. um in india they taught me that we can get an ex a spiritual experience through two ways either through grace or through practice 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 yes would you say that that's that's correct that there are like either the divine like chooses you for some reason or either you have to meditate and meditate or practice to to uh, get yes, that yes. state. Yeah. I, I can agree with that broadly. That, um, you know, because in fact I was not expecting something. I Myself, I was not practicing. Uh, I felt I was just somehow, uh, I, uh, the way in which I met this, you know, Christian mystic, as you, as you uh, mentioned at the beginning of our talk, is just that he, this person that showed up at my door and, uh, and knocked and asked, I was not there at the time, and asked my partner at the time, you know, who made this stained glass? Because I was making some stained glass. And it was obvious it was a new piece. But that was how it, he presented Like, who made this? Because he himself was making stained glass. And uh, he just said uh, like this. And she mentioned it my name and said I was not there, but I would come back later. So it was a very simple, innocent, very natural, 
you know, everyday kind of um, talk, you know, or meeting. And, and then the other one you mentioned, so I'd call that grace. I'd call it grace. But I would say in somehow it must have been, when looking back at it, it was seemed like it was already arranged by some, some higher power. Right. Because it was so beautifully timed for me. And the other part you, you mentioned is like about practice. And of course, people um, uh, all over the world are engaged in some form of practice or worship or, you know, what, what, whatever. They have a sense or a belief or they probably have had some experience of uh, the divine um, uh, touch or like this. And then somehow they are trying to really complete completely surrender or to, to practice to get more close to it or more fully pulled into it. That is how it, it, it will be experienced for them. And that does produce also, does bring about a deeper understanding and with deeper understanding more of the ego identity falls away and the more ego identity falls away the more it seems that uh, you know you become lighter and more open and, and naturally pulled into the that inner experience you see mm. for me i i think it's um i need to practice and i've been uh kind of struggling with that uh and I've been a little bit annoyed with the divine sometimes because I feel like I have to practice so much in order to get some stillness. And then at times I uh, kind of lose, uh, not hope, but I kind of give up for a while because I feel like it's so much work, like meditating, meditating, and I'm like battling with my mind. Uh, but do you think that that's the purpose, that some people are supposed to have a... Um, more challenging uh, path uh, in their search for enlightenment and awakening. That might be so, but uh, I, what happens is when people come to me, uh, somehow I, I have a sense of uh, how, I mean, they all say, I'm here for this. And as I listen to you and you speak as you did just now, that you say it was frustrating to this whole idea of practice, practice, practice. I feel immediately like a sort of urge to to kind of guide you towards that. You see that that this is how it happens, because uh, uh, I would not uh, like to say to people it takes a lot of practice to see that. I can say no, actually it is very simple, and if they are open, um, we can see how far you can get with actually clear coming to a, a place of clarity and peace within your own self, and it can be. A question of a few minutes also. So this is how I would put it because just to counteract this very stubborn belief that we have that it takes a lot of lifetimes or a lot of practice, I say not really. Um, uh, you can be guided into the space of no mind or into the space of the inner being and presence very simply. So whenever you want to do that I can help you if you are open to that. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting because I was very open for that a few years ago, but lately, like the past few years, I've kind of uh, explored other uh, paths of uh, spirituality, or not paths, but other sides of it. I've delved into emotion more, uh, and I was wondering about that. Uh, is it, is the intention or the, not the goal, but the path for every human being, is that... Awakening is that meant to be awakening? Is that what we're, we're um, moving towards? Is that like the intention for all of us? I would I would like to put it, and it's a beautiful um, drive or impulse uh, if towards awakening because it simply means to be totally yourself. That's all it means. So, <clears throat> uh, if if people understood it in this way. I, I, I don't know who I would find to say, well, I'm not interested in being true to myself. You right. see? So, you know, I'm not putting in front, like, say, a religious view or something. I'm saying that you're you discovering the, 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 the path to your fullness, to, to the full expression of what you are. But I think maybe that uh, some resistance that I've heard others have had, and also in myself I've discovered that, that I'm... A bit afraid I think actually of awakening because 
I'm afraid of the emptiness because I hear people like you and other spiritual uh, teachers are talking about that you just feel that you exist. It's kind of this emptiness. And then I'm afraid of losing myself. And a part of me really loves sometimes the ups and downs and the big the dramas, you know? Well, I don't... Um, you've said a lot there. Uh, I would say that actually you cannot be afraid of uh, self-discovery. Your mind is or that, that part of ourself that we imagine that has been our trained self, our uh, constructed sense of identity. Fear comes up in that region in us. But you truly cannot be afraid of your own true nature. And uh, they speak of words like emptiness. Um, perhaps we have listened too much without really being guided into what that really experience is like. Because if really and truly being guided into emptiness was such an abstraction and so much a removing from the life as you know it, then who would really want that? And you have to remember that most religious practices, most spiritual goals are, they, we have role models like Christ or the Buddha or Lord Krishna or like this, we have role models and they inspire in us great peace and love and openness, a great sense of freedom and joy. So, you know, it, this is an indication that self-discovery cannot be a sorrowful, you know, sort of uh, discovery. And if there's fear towards it, it's maybe because of the way in which it has been presented. As though, yes, there's just this great emptiness and we're just floating in this emptiness. But really, the experience is not like that. It is actually very, very, although it might, on one side you can say it's a great sense of emptiness, meaning that actually your mind is not cluttered with a hundred thousand things. There is a, a, a total state of presence and a total feeling of being, of natural state of yourself. And, you know, it, it, your mind is functioning in a really good way. It is, it, it is not your enemy. Your, the mind is more in service to uh, the expression of truth. So all the things that you know, people seem to be afraid of initially, the sort of like the, the uh, reflex to oh, think, oh, I'm going to lose all the things I like in life, like the contrast and the ups and downs and so on. Actually, you hinted at it. It is not so great if you are under it. It is, uh, if you, I mean, in, you will still continue to have a body, to have the senses functioning, to have a mind, but you will not be overwhelmed or be so likely to be thrown into states of depression. Experiences will continue for you, but you will not really be overwhelmed or become addicted to any particular state. And I'm sure that people will be very happy for that. Because largely, we suffer because of being in states that we cannot change. Right. You see? So, yeah. I, I would like to counteract that view, to say it is not really like that. The emptiness is not that, you know, you become sort of like stupid or foolish or you don't know what's going on or something like that. It's, it's different from that. It, it, you know, the, the world is, seen, is still seen. You still interact with beings. But it seemed much more superficial, many of the things, which it is, in fact. Many of the conversations that people talk about um, is very superficial, very, very momentary, not, not, very, not particularly contributing to our the deeper nature in any way. So I feel that the, the, the awakened being is a much more interesting being than the ego being. <laughs> okay? The, the right. awakened. <laughs> the awakened being is a much more interesting and and really meeting someone who is really awake to the self if you are open to that you're much more satisfied with that type of company than someone who is just really involved in their own ego and I, I, I am willing to stick my head out on that one and say yes <laughs> all the way <laughs> so uh do you still feel feelings of anger, 
yeah, jealousness, uh, envy, like all these lower emotions. Do you feel them or are they kind of, because I've heard someone said that they are just moving through you, but you're not attached to them, but you still feel yes. every emotion. Well, we never feel every emotion, but there are some uh, feelings that will still continue. It is still possible that you'll feel moments of some sadness, waves of sadness, or some anger may come, but it's much more momentary. It is not, they don't put down roots in, in, in there, you know. And uh, it is good that you, you, your being is open to feel these, these waves as well too. It also means that you can empathize and understand how other people can feel also. But you're not going to be a victim to them. You see, you may experience these feelings, but you will not be overwhelmed or saturated by them. You see, and that makes a huge difference. It means that there, there's much more a feeling of detachment towards not only those feelings, but even of pleasurable feelings too. You know, I don't feel that we benefit so greatly by being so deeply immersed and involved in our emotions and feelings and, uh, and whether they are beautiful or not. There's always a beautiful state of um, detachment, uh, a sweet detachment, in fact. Mm, to, to, to be so thrown into the pot, the stewing pot of feelings, is not a, a pleasant thing. It takes a long time for many people to come out also. Well, as you come more closely, more clearly into the state of your natural being, uh, such states will not prolong in you. Um, you, you see, they, they may come, but they won't, they won't leave a deep memory in you or, you know, so take you over, so to speak. But what about like falling in love? I mean, that's a feeling many of us know and perhaps love to feel. Uh, will that kind of be more detached in a way as well? No, actually, I would want to tell you something that may surprise you. I think it, it beautifies love more. You know, it's not that you, you know, okay, you're, you're more not so much falling in love, you're rising in love, actually. <laughs> because I, I don't feel that uh, this, I think we have a lot of romantic ideas about what life should be, and they often get into the richness, the diversity, the fullness, and the sense of completeness that can come with love. I think largely human being, we have misunderstood love. We have limited only to kind of like the emotional side of love, which is also included in the great love. But uh, the love that is, there's a love that is there naturally in us, which is inherent in our being. The love for the true self or for truth, the love for life, the love uh, which is manifesting as gratitude for your existence and for the, the abilities that come with the life, with the life force to perceive and to discern, to enjoy, to all of these things um, are, are contributing to the richness of love, you know. So uh, nothing is lost in that way. I would say love is amplified in a much richer sense, in fact. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people suffer love. You know it well, actually, that uh, it's not all the cozy images that uh, we like to fantasize it being. Um, that uh, it has another contribution too because it enriches our life in so many ways even in the painful moments because it, it can contribute opportunities for deeper understanding and to really for introspection and to look more deeply into our behavior and our thoughts and to see how much they can sometimes rob us of the fullness of love also mm. you see so right so when you are in this state, can you also, in this natural state, um, can you also see through the illusion in a way, so you will get knowledge about the universe, like all of a sudden know where, how this all is connected, how things work, where you come from, where you're going, like do you see into other dimensions, I guess, or worlds? Yes. Um, you know, we are so unique in our expression in form that each form, you know, expresses a certain aspect of the divinity of the totality. No one form expresses all of the totality. Um, and 
it is like when you speak about like the knowledge that you you hinted at there this knowledge this kind of knowingness more than knowledge i put knowingness at a much more profound than knowledge because knowledge uh, until we really know who we are our knowledge so to speak is not so reliable i mean if you consider we have all this knowledge but the knower of knowledge we don't know you see so i mean we love the idea that we can we can we can learn about things but when asked about our true nature beyond just a personality we choke up we don't know what to say you know we we have so little understanding of our true self well part of that great awakening that take place is a sort of a, a, a spontaneous integration of knowledge it's like a like you you did not study for it but you come into a field of synchronicity and harmony that you may call grace in fact and you may never be able to to speak a tenth of what you experience intuitively you cannot put it into words it is like somehow you're pulled into this um a realm of uh, divinity and it is very natural not because you are especially special i i don't want to put it like that but that you will feel that this is a very special thing you see that uh, you without studying you 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 can come to know things we 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 are we are we have been so cultured and uh, to believe that whatever you know is what you've had to study but some people come into a realm of knowingness intuitive knowingness because their being is flowing in harmony with the cosmic uh, pulse it's not even they study that they they come to that simply by having this attitude of of exchanging their personal identity in some way to 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 merge with the supreme self which is no other than their true self actually and in the process of that of being immersed in that they are discovering they are discovering very spontaneously actually they're not even running after it they're just they're more in in the in loveness of it more than the specific knowing of anything mm. you see so the, the the knowledge becomes a is a sort of byproduct of falling in love with the self I'm just thinking it would be very interesting with people like you talking to scientists, you know, and share information. I mean, we could find out so much more about the mysteries of well, life. Well, you know, recently I was invited to such a, a conference, uh, and uh, it was a conference about uh, science and non-duality, and I was invited there. I was so much looking forward to speaking to scientists, to speaking to physicists and math- yeah. ma- great mathematicians. I've had the privilege of speaking to some over the years, but I thought that specifically, okay, now we can talk, but they didn't show up. The only only one showed up who I liked very much. It was very nice, but I I feel that we are speaking about the same subject, in fact, yeah, yeah from different angles. Yeah. But uh, I I have not really met anyone who would really come forward and talk about it. Hmm. You see, because really with these type of things, I cannot speak about them. just academically <clears throat> it must come into an opportunity for direct experience also and to confirm something <clears throat> and that's going to come from more of an intuitive place rather than a studied place right i see that it's different uh, words terms expressions and no i don't mind that the, the different terminology and stuff we are perfectly okay with that you know it can be as vast it can be as simple it can be as complex in some way but not if it is intended or made to feel complex i like to simplify things and to look at them in a more naked and honest way and uh, and many people want to do the very same thing too so i feel quite excited if i would meet uh, scientists who are who are genuinely um, fascinated by the subject and there are there are some perhaps even many but i have not met them so much and there are maybe through your program i might meet a few of them well i mean that's my dream that we will create these bridges 
between spirituality and science, I think it's the same actually, just from different angles and yeah. I don't see any separation in fact. Sorry? Uh, ultimately, there is not really any any profound separation. You know, in real discussion, they must meet. That is the excitement, the exciting thing about it is the possibility of coming to meet. You know, to that through not saying we are coming to meet, but that we are coming and through exploring genuinely, we come to a, a, a singular understanding. In fact, you yeah. may still keep the, the the label of science and spiritual if you want. But the but the but the outcome would be one of some a deeper understanding if the, if the search is genuine. Right. So speaking of that, do you feel like you are expanding, also discovering new things as well all the time, or have you kind yes. of reached some? Yes. You. There is two two aspects of it. One is that I feel that as long as the body is here. And, and the vital breath is in the body and consciousness is present, one will always be maturing and refining one's knowledge. It will be happening just as a matter of fact. You know, that change will be, that evolution will continue, that maturing will continue. But there's also a certain ultimateness in some way where the background of that maturing will be of unchanging awareness. There's a ground there that is not part of an evolutionary movement. It is like the it is like the source or the base. That when one comes to that understanding and that seeing and that direct experience, that is called enlightenment. That is what is termed enlightenment or full awakening. That you are established in your understanding, in your being in that singular uh, oneness, not as a thought, not as an intellectual conviction, but as the truth, as the truth of yourself. And at the same time, you have a dynamic expression as life in, in the body, where you, you meet people that you enjoy to speak with them, you, you have satsang or you whatever it is, that continues to happen and there's a growing in that field there's a, an evolution in that expression, but that's only in the expression. Behind the expression is some unchanging dimension, which is, I, I'm using the word behind, but it's not really behind because it's not limited. It's everywhere. But in order to speak of it, uh, it, it, it it's, I will use, to use the words like be is behind the mind or something like that. Mm. Yeah. So when you're talking about the true self, uh, are you in a way talking about the soul, like me as not Janneke, but the the being I was before I came here, and then I then I look at myself as something separate from you in a way, but from another perspective, a lot of people talk about oneness that we're one. So the true nature is that as me or as the whole. If you understand yes, my yes, question. it is both, but is but is more true to say you are in your wholeness. You see, you spoke of the being you were before you came uh, into being a person, or so to speak. You see, so that being was not left somewhere. It's not somewhere else. It's right here in the core of who you really are. In fact, um, the, the, a book that is just coming out, our next book, is called who you are before you became, you see? And I say this simply because you mentioned, you know, like what I was before I came into this, into this role as being Yanaka or whatever. No? So, um, yes, pretty much like that. And Yanaka is, is, is a role that you're playing now and that role keeps changing. Uh, but in, in your inmost being, there's something unchanging. So it's kind of two aspected, you can say. The, the parts, just like the body is always changing, mind is always changing, identity is always changing. And yet your deepest being remains unchanging. And it, in, a, in a sense, it needs to be so. Easy? Because, and that's what makes you know, introspection or meditation so powerful, because the one you take yourself to be now, when it begins to reflect on its true nature, 
it comes back to that still place, the unchanging place, the beautiful place, the harmonious place. And actually it brings a lot of light and illumination in the expression that, that is functioning right now also. It illumines it and it brings much more joy and openness because actually even ego, I don't want to strike at the ego only because actually ego can be there but it, by the time you understand your true nature it is so superficial, it's more playful. Oh. The thing is that it's become so, so much representing a kind of fact but it is actually the fiction of ourself. The fact is your in most being. That is the fact of yourself. Yeah, it's so <laughs> exciting to hear about this. And uh, I would like to speak um, or ask you, because I think many listeners are now thinking, but how? How can I practice? How can I silence my mind? And I actually tried the other day, I did one of your exercises on your webpage, Self Inquiry, and I tried to sit with the I exist, the, that sentence or that feeling, I exist. And then it was like ridiculous. All these thoughts from like years ago came in memories, like things I haven't thought of. It was like even harder to stay still. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you do something for your listeners and let's do a bit of it now. Okay. Okay. Because, sure. it, because that would be the best thing if they want to find out and rather than I am telling them in words and so on, let's show how simple it can be, in fact. Okay, so what do we do? <laughs> well, just, just, just like right now, we're sitting here together and uh, I would say like, okay, um, just you have obviously have the feeling of being. You know that you are. The sense I am is with you. And uh, I just want us just to focus only on that feeling of being. Only on the sense of being. We're not going to create or imagine that because it's already there when you have the feeling I, it is the sense of being. Later we call it a person, but actually it, if, it, it is only a sense of being. So we're only going to start there. Just the feeling, I'm here. That's just this. Now, if you don't, um, we don't, are not going to add any stories to it. Okay? So whatever happened today, we're not going to include, or what happened yesterday and so on. There's only the feeling of that I exist, you exist, and you're here. That's how I like. That's the most simple way. Because whatever happened this morning, you will forget later on. As you did what happened yesterday, you've forgotten also. And the day before, mostly, largely, we have forgotten. So I always ask you, just come to this place of I am, this sense of being. Okay? And don't allow any other thoughts or judgments or feelings to combine itself with just the feeling of being. Okay? So we don't touch any thought, don't touch any thought, or if any feelings come up, just the, the feelings come up, but you're not going to combine or get involved in them. That's all. So you leave everything, everything leave, leave, left aside. You, you can do this, no? It's not so difficult. I have to concentrate. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. You'll have to do a little bit because actually, but you don't have to concentrate so much. Just that you are just the feel, just a feeling of being. <clears throat> you're not inventing it. You're not imagining. You're simply not engaging with the stuff your mind is bringing up. And normally, the mind will want to bring up a lot of things right now. Okay? <laughs> yeah. A tsunami of things. So this is why I wanted to do it with you now. So you can see that even if a lot of things come up, it is okay. It is okay. If 1,000 things come up, in some way, it makes it easier because you can't think of a thousand things. If a million things come up, you'd actually be very quiet because you can't think of a million things. You see? Usually will, if... Eh? Will it get easier? I mean, will there come less and less thoughts? Right now, it's going to do. So, you see, it's not, if any thoughts are coming up, even like, will it get easier? That's another thought you're adding. So just leave that. Don't touch that. Okay? <laughs> Look, you're going to enjoy this. You're going to enjoy it. Look, it's so simple. And uh, so you don't engage with any of the thoughts, you know, or any feeling or anything to do with time, like yesterday or this morning or what will happen 
uh, after the show or what is going to be my next question. I know you can do that. So you just leave them for a moment. Uh, your listeners, are, your viewers are going to really enjoy this through you. So you don't touch any of these things for a moment and uh, until there's just a feeling of emptiness. Just a feeling of emptiness. I want to show you that there's nothing to be afraid of, actually. So you leave everything, leave everything, and even if the mind, if you, the mind is not, is shaking or something, it's okay. It can shake. It's not the first time. You know, simply you're not being involved with it. You see? And tell me genuinely, don't try to pretend or nothing to me, what is your feeling at the moment? If you follow all the things I ask you to, to just do, just to stay that, are you still inside very, very noisy? Because we, we, we can work through that too. No, I'm not very noisy. I, I feel strange. Yes. Actually. Yes. Now, the feeling of strangeness, that is just a thought, actually. That, 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 that the mind says, oh, this, this feels strange or something. And so it, it, it's, it's, what happens is there's a side to the mind that is not really working on your behalf. It will try to sabotage or to distract you from being in your center. We must be aware of that. Okay? So that's the side of the mind that will show up at times like this to try and discourage you and to put you off. Okay? It happens for everyone, whether you are a Shiva or a Christ or a Buddha or whatever. So for a moment, that will come, you know? They feel a bit strange. It's not, you just, uh, some, it's a sensation is there. But don't uh, combine yourself. Don't use it as an assessment. You're aware of it, but you're not touching it. Okay? So that feeling is just a feeling. It's just a feeling, and it will change. So don't give it too much attention. Now, what is left now? Well, I feel energy in my body. Yes. A lot. This is very natural. This is very natural. Because what tends to happen sometimes is the mind itself was using that energy to produce thoughts. You see? And now, because you've been invited to not give energy to the thoughts, you're experiencing energy as energy. It is fine. You see? It is not disturbing. It's just a flow of um, energies there. And you are aware of this. Okay? So don't say that you are even this energy. It is only a movement. You see? You are greater because you are aware of it. So let the energy just flow. Don't interpret it and don't identify. So that's another beautiful thing. Now, now what is remaining? I don't know. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. I don't know. I... Yeah. Now, this is something beautiful, you know? And it's okay that you don't know. It, I, want to, I want to say this to you again. It is okay to not know, because to not know, because the mind is always pretending it knows something. And to not know is actually a very spacious place. It's a, it's a place where you can simply just be. And being is not about knowledge. It's just of being. And that is one of the important stages that you will experience within yourself and you will allow yourself simply to be. It is just a feeling of being. And it is good to get used to it. Isn't it? <laughs> because I'm looking at your face, I don't see any fear at the moment. Okay? No, All right, I feel okay. like laughing. This is good. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> the laughing is your joy. It's a kind of happiness. And also that... You don't, uh, you don't feel to, uh, you don't have anything to particularly say about it. And you see, so all the signs are, are arising just by themselves. You're not making anything up. You're simply noticing and just giving your, yourself a break from your mind. Consciously, you're choosing to do that. And just by following this, and not being afraid, you see, you, we are together right now, so it's not like saying maybe if you were by yourself, you might think, oh my God, I'm going crazy, and so on. That's another thought, by the way. You're not going crazy. Actually, you're becoming sane in the most beautiful way. You see? And then, like this, the peace is, is, coming, is, is coming, is coming, and the spaciousness. 
And so these are feelings that you should not be afraid of at all because they are your friends. This is your perfume. It is very, very beautiful. You see? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. I love this. Yeah. I felt like I got an experience of something now. Yeah. You see, your mind wants to turn it to the past already, you say. Yeah. It says, I felt, I felt, I got, you see, like it's already want to change it to the past. But it is already still present in you. It doesn't belong to time, actually. Right. You see? Now, this is just the kind of exercise I often introduce to people who sometimes come with a lot of fear and some, some anxiety about these things and they've heard all this kind of stuff and said, no, no, let's just try it and see. And after they try, they just want more. They want to do it more and more because it feels so good and so natural. And that's all that happens. You continue in this type of just, just being. You're just being. You're not making any mantras. You're not uh, sitting in a cave. You, you're simply is simply resting and not engaging with the thoughts that are coming. Don't get pulled in. You see? So you can see them like you're looking at the screen, but don't log into them. You simply stay in the feeling of just this state of presence. And what you are experiencing at the moment is your natural state of presence, of being. And that is your divinity, in fact. It is simple like that. And the, wow. more, yeah, and the more that you, you, you allow that, you give yourself the space to experience this, it will bring such a beautiful silence and intuitiveness and peace and joy into your being. And I don't think you are going to want to dismiss those at all. I had Very had good. this experience. You are having it. Yeah. Stir my mind. Yes. Like when thoughts come in, I'm like, oh, that was a sad thought, and then, like, I, yeah. I really am much more aware. I was much more aware now. This is the thing. You you are going to become increasingly aware in a natural way. So the thoughts come, and what I would encourage is not to be selecting. This is a good one. This is a bad one. You know, just see them all as thoughts. And you, why I say this is because from the place you're looking, you are beyond thoughts. You have no need of them. You see? When we engage with thoughts, it's like you get pulled into their energy, in their suggestiveness, and it amounts to a kind of distraction for a while. You see? Now, that's not to say thoughts are bad in themselves. I just think that we are too involved with them, too often and too much. Now you're becoming aware of the space of being. That's much more important than thoughts. Because from the space of being, you will feel much more energized, much more switched on to what is important for you. You see? And you will feel that. You will not be thinking that. And that is so important. I don't think you, in the experience, you will not need anybody to tell you it is important. You will know already how valuable that is uh, to your existence. So just a question to that. What is the purpose of thoughts then, if the knowing is there already in ah, a way? Very good question. <laughs> very good question. Well, thoughts are good in their practical functioning. We need thoughts if you have to arrange to take a flight and to, to do things, practical things. You will still you have a mind you so you the thoughts will come, but when you when you are more established in the state of presence, the thoughts will become more ordered. They be, they won't attack you in quite the same way. In the beginning, when you are learning, when you are discovering your strength, they're going to come like a tsunami. They're going to they're going to want to break your spine. They're going to come like that. I'm telling you, okay, to put you off, and many people are put off. But many go through into this wonderful state of being. So get used to that, that the thoughts are going to come, oh, you think you've done, you think you're special, and this, you know, it's going to come like that. It's going to actually begin to separate from you. 
and feel like it's your enemy a little bit, you know. And in fact, when you are been cooperating with the old regime of thinking, you know, they will not seem like they're a threat. They seem like they're a friend. But as soon as you're discovering your true nature, they will seem to go on the attack. And they will try to create distortions in your perception and to tell more lies and so on. And some people, actually it helps some people because they just come to see clearly that their mind is not on their side. It's not their friend, not yet. You see? And so a little battle starts there and sometimes you feel you're losing it. And then you have to be encouraged, darling, you know, you're doing so well, you stay with it. In a while, it will be over. You will go through. But this is what, this is the challenge, the great challenge in any genuine search for liberation or for truth is that there's a side to all our nature, to everyone's nature, that is going to be uh, to try and sabotage any opportunity to win your freedom. Hmm. It is like that. And if I don't say this, then in some way I'm keeping something from you. Everyone goes through that, that storm, that wilderness, where you feel like you're left alone and it's so difficult. And what most people do is just give in to the mind, to the mafia. Just, okay, 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 I'll be a good girl. I want to try and run for freedom anymore. But there are many others who will continue to encourage you and say, this, this is your real opportunity and purpose for being on this earth with this body. You must overcome because where you came from is from the Supreme Being. That's who you are. You're a child of the Supreme Being. You see? And you must win yourself back from, the, from this kind of, um, I would say, the distortions and the delusions that make us settle for so little in life when you are everything as you are. Yes. Thank you so much. This was so profound and so wonderful. And I felt that it was so healing for me right now. And I'm sure for so many who are watching. Oh, I feel very, very happy that you took that opportunity because I, there's nothing that teaches like experience and example. And that you offered up just to take a look and to show that actually it is poss how possible it is. And how quickly sometimes the mind will try and ah, catch you back. Okay, yeah. come back, I got you back. And you start to speak in the past tense again and so on. But the energy of the truth is still radiating in you. You see? And it's like, uh, in a sense, what tends to happen in the beginning, it is like you take a piece of metal and you put it in the fire. And you take it out of the fire when it's red hot and you can start many fires with this metal. But if you leave it out, it goes cool again or something. And sometimes our minds go cool again because that's just what we are used to being in that sort of state. You know? But, uh, you know, I feel that with someone like yourself who have had a genuine urge for things and especially now that you taste the simplicity of it, that it yeah. is not so huge, a big deal that you have to go and do all these practices for, you know, that you can continue with your life, you can continue doing the things you enjoy but include this more, this, this looking inwards. It will, it will contribute a lot to not only your expression, but to the depth of your being and the way that you, your the wisdom will more come into your uh, expression more too. Yeah, thank you. I got some other insights now or perspectives or something. Yeah. Something clicked inside. Yes. yes. And I have a lot of energy in my legs. That was very interesting. <laughs> That the energy went there. Yes, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm labeling it again. But the <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> okay. But at the same time, though the energy might go there, you have not moved. <laughs> no. You understand? <laughs> the, the source from where this energy is coming also. Yeah. So there's a lot, uh, Janneke, is to, to, that you can discover and keep on discovering. And it becomes richer and deeper. And then sometimes you may feel that your mind is is on the increase, another time it drops and then you find that your being is rising more, much more, more, more powerfully. But that is, the, that is really the, 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 the richness of um, breaking through into freedom again. Mm. 
Thank you so much. I'm gonna let you go now. Okay. Thank you. This is so wonderful. <laughs> yeah, much light to you. Yes, 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 thank, yes. Yeah, thank you. Very, very good, very good. Very happy to meet you, in fact, and uh, I feel that uh, if more interviews would go in this way, where we are not just discussing things in a verbal and a mental way, but we actually can engage in the in the in the in the, the actuality of seeing then you know I feel then so many people will be encouraged by that because it's not a theory for them they've borne witness to something that is very tangible for them and maybe they they took a ride with us as we as we went on yeah I mm. that's kind of been my approach and it has happened naturally yeah. I did that with Byron Katie and a couple yes. of others and I speak about my personal uh, experiences in my vlogs because this yeah. web series is actually my personal journey as well yes uh, so it feels very uh, uh, natural for me to do that so I would love to do more of that and don't limit uh, don't don't limit yourself um, by saying well you know uh, don't draw any definitions around yourself so it okay. just keeps it keeps that space open you see keep a space open and you can always return to this exercise yeah. because I really would I would say of all the things that we do to come to this uh, to this point of recognition and uh, and to, to to go to go on with it through with it rather than backing away from it and then just treat it as an old experience mm. to go on through with it will be the most important thing in your life so I'm just going to leave that with you and just say, you, you know, so I'm so happy that you, I'm very happy to have this type of interview where you actually step on board with me and uh, we could look together. So it's wonderful. been very refreshing. Great. And I That's wish your, your listeners and your viewers very well, you know, in this, in this journey that they're making also, because they must be on a journey to be watching this type of program. So. Yes, yeah. and they are saying that they are very grateful for me putting myself out there. Very good. <laughs> because often they are feeling the same, and it's hmm. it's it, we are connected in a way. So it's yeah, I think when we're opening our hearts up and we dare to be open, then we are maybe speaking not only for ourselves but for many people. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.